do a video for you on how I, uh, to assemble my little apple box here. Um, there's details and a tutorial on my blog site and that's where you can also go and grab the um, template that I'll be using today to put the little box together. So this uh, basically is a box in the shape of an apple and like all boxes the lid comes off and you can put all sorts of goodies and treats in there but the, um, the other thing that it does do is that you can swivel this little um, front flap out the way and you can use the white section behind here to write your message on. So I'm going to go through a couple of things with you and hopefully the video won't be too long but I just want to show you sort of how I put the, the basic box structure together, how to get it to swivel and also what I did with um, the little bit of punch out for my worm on the front. So once you've got the template you need to cut out all of the pieces. Now there's just a whole heap of apples on it and they are labelled as to what um, each piece is and I find because they all look the same for me I go through and as I'm cutting them out I make sure I write um, a little annotation um, what they are so I write a little B on the base pieces and you need two of those and I'll put, put them together and then I write a little LD for the lid piece and that goes in the next layer and then of course I know the white layer is the, one of the top layers and then I put another little T for the other red top and basically you want to stack them all up um, and when you um, print them out from the template the writing and tracing when you um, trace them onto your cardstock, your pencil marks will be on that side. So I assemble them all up that way. Does that make sense? So that all of your pencil lines, if you have got a bit of a pencil line there and you cut around it a bit, um, not dodgy, um, that's not the word I'm looking for, but if you've, you know, haven't gone right on your pencil line, if you tip it up the other way, you're not going to see it anyway. So um, what I mean is like the top here. Um, that fits on there like that and I've traced around um, obviously a piece that's on there and then it goes up this way. Hopefully what you see will see what I mean and what, what, what that means guys is the fact that um, the apples does they, they do go in one way they're not symmetrical so like that fits that way but if I was to flip it over you see that it it doesn't line up and the same thing is if you take your next lid piece and you have it flipped the wrong way your apple is not going to assemble because it, it won't line up. So you need to make sure that you've got all of your apples facing um, the same way up so that they all fit together. They're not symmetrical, so you can't reverse them. So you will find if you try and put one layer one way and one the other, your box isn't going to go together. So hopefully that makes sense. If you trace them all out the one way and then stack them all so that your pencil marks are facing down, they'll all stack together. Okay, so what you need is you need two bases, one, two, then you need the um, what's called the lid piece and then a white top and a red top. Okay, so you can see then what I've gone ahead and done here is I've put double-sided tape on one of my base pieces and I've also put double-sided tape on my lid piece, okay? Um, and that's the direction that I've done it. I've put it on the back side of the base and then the next direct lid piece and you'll see why and I'll start with the base first. Hopefully this is not more confusing than helpful. I'm a little bit worried now that I'm adding to confusion rather than helping you work out how to do this. The other thing you'll have to do is you'll you'll get some dimensions to cut out these side strips. You've got two narrower strips there to make the lids and you'll have two wider strips um, and there to make the box base. And in both cases you'll have one strip Let's turn it this way that is slightly longer than the other because one strip has tabs on the end of it and the other strip doesn't have tabs so basically you score all of them at half an inch and I've, I've got that in the instructions for you and for all four pieces you want to go along and I, this is what I mean by putting by notching the half centimeter strip I mean the half an inch strip I say in the tutorial to go along and notch the half inch edge and I'll quickly do this Um, for the end ones, the ones that have got the score lines on the ends, you just want to turn these into little tabs. So you want to just take out up to the score line, make a little tab there, and then you're just going to remove that bottom little portion there. So you want to tab at the top edge on both ends. And that happens on one of the small pieces and one of the large pieces. The piece with the... Um, 
with the um, tabs on the end. I start with that piece and the wider pieces are going to make the base piece. I make the base of the box. So all I do with all my little notches, you can actually just leave them on the bench and you're just going to fold along that little score line just so you get all your little notches folded down. Okay. You can bone fold them if you want. Okay, so there are all my little notches done this way. And then the tabs get folded back outwards. So if you're folding your tabs down, you want to fold your little side if you're folding your notches down, sorry guys, your little tabs go upwards. Now for each of your pieces, you just want to grab a little bone folder and you want to give it a bit of a curve because we've got a curvy apple and it sort of helps to start the process if you've got a curvy piece of cardstock. Okay, so there's one, one side of my apple. Obviously the other side of the base is the big, um, wider um, base piece, do the same thing, push all your little notches down. Now you can use Tombow Girl if you want to to put this together, but I found when I was doing it, I was very, 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 very impatient. Um, so I use double sided tape now. So that's the other half of my apple. Totally looks like an apple. Okay, so what we're doing is we've got a base piece here. This will be your Tracy Tracy pencil markings on this side. That's the side you want to put your double sided tape on. So for speed, I have put this on previously. Some things I do for speed. There we go. So I've got double sided tape. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to start, like I said, with the piece um, with the notch in it. And I'm going to turn it so that the I'm going to start at the base of the apple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this folded edge here, this notch, into the center of the apple at the bottom. Okay, so what I do is I stick that in the center. And then I put those, attaching those notches to that double sided tape at the back. And basically what I'm going to do is work my way, I'm going to try and do it so that you can actually see. Work my way around by pushing the base into those folded area there. Do you see what I mean? I'm just going to push it in and work my way around. It is, it's pretty easy guys. And once you've got the tape, see it just sort of sticks there. It's, it's not too tricky. Well, it's not meant to be too tricky. <laughs> All right, so once you've got that one on one side, you've got some tabs left here. So you're just going to put a bit of double-sided tape on those tabs as well. I could have easily done that beforehand, but I didn't. So just a little bit of double-sided tape on those ones. So starting at this top edge here, just fold that tape in so we don't get it all over ourselves. You're going to match up the um, end of the next piece with that fold line there and then you're just going to continue the process of adding your notches to the bottom of that base piece so just roll it round in your hand I find is the easiest way oh not concentrating okay so rolling it around in your hand and sticking those notches down I'm using this hand here to stick the notches underneath the back as I roll around tricky when you're trying to show someone what you're doing okay so okay now I've got and the reason why I stick these um oh gosh the camera's going in out of focus yucky the reason why I stick the ones with the tabs on first is so that they start right in the center top and bottom because sometimes this long one depending on how wicked you've been with your um folding and getting it close in it's a little bit it may be a little bit longer when you get down to the end here Longer is better than shorter because that way you can always just cut off your smidgy that you're too long rather than getting to the end and your box not meeting. That makes you sad. Um, when that side piece is a little bit longer, that's that's actually um, a good thing because then you can just chop it off and make sure that it actually fits nice and tight together at the end there and then make sure those little notches are sticking down. My box is looking very messy at the moment because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so then going around and making sure all that base piece is all stuck down nice and neat. And then what you want to do is when you flip it over the other way, guys, is you're going to get your other um, base piece. And making sure you stick it on the right way. You see before, guys, it doesn't match up if you try and stick it that way. It's not right. Got to make sure you stick it on right. So I always put Tombow... 
for these ones. So a little bit of uh, Tombow glue, mm, yuck, um, to stick on the base. Okay, and then put this on the bottom so it sticks on. Okay, and Tombow gives you that chance to make sure it's all lined up and all hunky dory. Okay, so that's the base of your box. That's your apple base done. It's a bit messier than what I would normally like it done. Okay, but ooh, I'm okay with it. All right, so move your base to the side and bring in your top pieces here. Now your piece mark lid. Um, with your pencil marks on this side, it's going to get tape on the back. Same as before, we're going to um, run these ones around. So you don't need to oops, watch that too closely, guys. So I'm just going to quickly um, do this in fast forward and stick it on. It's exactly the same process as before. The only thing different this time is that you're going to um, uh, have your um, tape facing up and your obviously making a lid so you want the second piece to go downwards obviously all right here we go Okay, guys, so you would have seen I had another little oopsie there with my um, double-sided tape on the ends. I stuck it on the wrong, I stuck it on the inside instead of the outside of the tab. So nothing we couldn't fix, but I fixed it now. So um, that was me trying to pre-prepare and not really pre-prepare very well. <laughs> but it's okay, I fixed it. Okay, so now we've got a box lid. That fits over our box base okay but um before we stick now how we stuck a base straight on the bottom of that one before we do our um lid sticking to this one which is this little white piece here we actually want to make sure um that we prepare our top two layers together before we stick it to that box base now there's nothing has to happen to the white layer the white layer the top um red layer all I did was I grabbed um, a bit of a circle sculpt circle punch, took a little um, chunk out of the corner there to make it look like a bit of a, an apple bite. A bit of red ink, real red ink, because I've used real ink, red ink card, real red cardstock. <laughs> and then all I've done is I've just inked up the um, bite mark a little bit to make it look get a bit of dimension there and then I actually have run around the tire edge and I'll do that quickly. Okay so I've done the real red ink onto the real red cardstock and I've actually just did a bit heavier down that bottom corner just to give it a bit of a, a shine on there. So that that top piece now is, is ready and basically I'm just going to line them up. Now the white is a fraction smaller um, then the red and that's okay so you might want to look at it from the back just to make sure you've got that little tiny border all the way around the edge and the worms on the front because the worm actually hides the brad the brad is right on this edge here under the, um, the worms tail there so what I do is I just put these two layers together bring in my piece of foam take a paper piercing tool and oh, about um, really technical isn't it about there put a hole in it grab a just an ordinary um, silver brad lucky brad doesn't have to be very pretty and you're just gonna brad those two layers together like that spread the tag out at the back now that's the mechanism for your message hidden message on the front so now that that's assembled, you can glue this to the top of your uh, box and you'll do that with Tombow glue. So Tombow on the top of your box and you're just going to glue um, this down and you can keep them together. Um, you won't glue the red down because unless you've got Tombow absolutely everywhere, you should be fine just to smudge that on. 
so that it and these top layers are a little bit larger than the inside and then the one below it just so that when you look from the top it all is nice and covered and it all looks lovely together okay so that sticks the top of your box on check it all works all right so that'll stick down for you so then we've got ink everywhere here guys all we need to do is add our bit of um decoration oh, I can't find it here it is so you get a, a bit for a leaf but you can cut out whatever your leaf you like and a bit for a stalk so all I've done is smudge the st um, stem rather not stalk with a bit of um, soft suede ink since I use soft suede cardstock and I just pop that on the top glue it down and then the leaf I just grabbed my stylus from my score tool and I just kind of I don't know guesstimated where the vein might run in a leaf like that and just ran a, a vein down the leaf and then a bit of smudging with the Lucky Limeade because it's Lucky Limeade cardstock and then I just kind of get my smudger and went really sort of heavy just on the, the seam itself to sort of highlight that. I don't know, I'm not, a, not great at the punch arty sort of stuff but that's kind of how I get around doing it. And then a bit of tombo on the back of the leaf. And I'm just going to pop that, I don't know, there. Looks good. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to put our worm on the front because we want to cover that um, little hidden closure that we've got. So move that to the side. And I've gone ahead and I've punched out all the pieces. Now, I'm no punch art um, guru at all. Um, far from it. I'm quite an amateur um, punch artist and circles about as exciting as I get so um, you'll have to excuse the crude nature of my worm I'm sure if you wanted to you could get a better worm on the front but I just wanted to quickly show you how I went ahead and did it so I start by putting my um, a little bit of double-sided tape right on the top of the brad now you can use a mini glue dot but I can't find mine right now you just want to make sure the big tip is that you do not do not get glue onto the card front the glue can only go on the brad okay because the card stock moves um, and you don't want to sort of glue everything down together you want to keep that just on, on the on the brad there now I start by just putting my little three quarter inch circle sticking him right on the brad okay and when you actually move it you'll see that oh well it sort of stays still can you sort of see but it's kind of moving there a little bit um, generally it just stays still now to put all the other um, pieces on uh, the circles on I just use some um, dimensionals to stick them all on because they're going to be overlapping one another uh, you can't really stick them flat so I just work along putting a bit of dimensional or a whole one but I'm just using some scraps at the moment and then just sort of building Something that looks like a worm. Okay. Okay, so before I put the glue the head on, I'm going to um, give him a bit of a face. Um, again, like I said, I'm pretty crude with my whole punch out element here. Now let me just... I need tweezers to do this. Now to get the um, base backgrounds for the my worm's eyes, I have used um, the medium size circles in the owl punch. Love that punch. Now I'm going to get some two-way glue. Oh messy table okay found some um, so I'm just going to put glue his eyes backgrounds of his eyes on with two way glue so I'm just popping him there I don't know and there yep yeah. and then to get the 
um, center of his eyes, two black eyes. I've used the cupcake punch, which is the little sprinkles um, from that punch, and that forms, well, I reckon makes perfect little eye centers. Um, so I use those two. And then to get his little mouth, all I did was I grabbed a half inch punch and a three quarter inch punch with a scrap cardstock. And I put a three quarter inch kind of divot in an edge of the cardstock like that. Then I lay my half inch punch over top of that little divot and then kind of just put it on until I'm happy with the size of his smile. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. But there you go, that's my. Um, that's my worm's smile or mouth, if you want to call it a mouth. I'm just going to glue that on. There you go. Pretty cute. And then, oops, dimension him up as well. And then the last thing I'm going to do is his little glasses. And I'll quickly show you how I make his glasses. Well, this guy's sitting up a bit further than my previous example but that's all right that's what it's all about just being slightly different yeah he just looked a bit kind of naked without some glasses so all I've got is this um, floral wire this is just silver floral wire and all I've done is I've gone along and I put my paper piercing tool which just happens to be the right worm size eye size <laughs> and I just wrap um, the floral wire around once like that and that gives you one um, glasses, one eyeglass hole. Don't know what you call it when it's one. And then you just wrap it round again. Sorry, guys, I should show you what I'm doing. Wrap it round again. Put our glasses. Um, and then I use our um, multi purpose craft and rubber scissors to kind of just, I don't know, cut off there ish. Not very technical, I know. And then I kind of bend the little ends down to give me glasses, maybe. <laughs> and then I try them on for size. Ah, huh, and they're good. Okay, if they weren't good, I just kind of then squish them in a little bit until they're sort of the right-ish sort of size. Now, the only way I found to glue these on and the only way I find works is um, a bit of crystal effect so I'm not going to do it now because you do have to let it set aside to dry for a little bit I tried hot glue I tried super glue nothing seems to work crystal effects is the way to go so all I do is I run just a small sort of little smidgy on the back and then put them down and glue them in place and then your glasses will stay on like this little guy here glasses will stay on -da! and it's crystal effects is the only thing so where's my first base box there you go guys, um, the little worm on a uh, apple box. I really hope you um, enjoy that tutorial. It has been a lot of fun to make this one. It is not that complicated as long as you get all of your apples all kind of stacked in the right direction. Everything will fit together nicely and you'll end up with a gorgeous little box. Have fun with that one guys and I'd love to see your recreations. Bye!